Welcome back from Daily Rant. The papers are here. We're starting this morning with the new independent. And uh, uh, the top story here, or the front page story, uh, 2,400 cities shambolic as angry NDC Delta Force victims were treated uh, with kit gloves. I, I guess that's what the story wants to say. So that's the biggest story on the independent. And then uh, Mahama attacks uh, Kufado. He lacks the courage to deal with lawless acts of vigilante groups he charges and uh, that's the uh, independent uh, newspaper uh, daily guide why ndc lost 2016 elections mahama speaks and 13 delta force uh, granted bail uh, five arrested over agbogloshi bloody clash and 50 deputy ministers uh, take office the Daily Graphic, Chief Justice assigns 14 courts to deal with Galamse cases. Uh, justify your inclusion, President tells Deputy Ministers. And uh, it's a photograph of the uh, Santihini uh, asking that would patronize Kantanka vehicles. We're told he's uh, bought one for himself. And then relocate Sodom and Gomorrah residents. That's the IGP uh, talking there. The Ghanaian Times says, trouble for illegal minors. Chief Justice sets up Galamse uh, court and then uh, president forms team in record time. Uh, don't link agbogloshi violence to politics, IGP cautions. Um, there are others here that we'll take a look at. Business finder says pension funds, uh, 545 million cities paid, are standing of 2 billion to be released by end of 2017. Daily Statesman, justify your appointment. Heritage, Chinese Galamse barons caged. JJ Spirit was dead in 2016. Those are uh, some of the uh, papers I have here. The BNFT has this great story. 24% of urban dwellers lack water. My guest to do the talking this morning to my extreme left is uh, a lecturer at the Pentecost University, uh, Kwame Apao. Kwame, good morning once again. Morning, morning. And thanks so much for joining us. Thank and happy Easter in advance. And then a member of the NDC's communication team, Brahma Malibu, is also with me here. Good morning, too. Good morning, right. Mm, and happy Easter in advance, Same too. To you. Mm -hmm. And a member of Parliament for Timpanic Constituency, a member of the NDC, Joseph Dindio Benkai, is also with me, Deputy Minister. Mm -hmm. A member of the NDC. Oh, uh, member that's of the a member of the NDC. A member of the NPP. That's what I wanted. Sorry, pardon me if I said the NDC. Member of the NPP. Good morning, too. Mm -hmm. And morning, happy right. Easter in advance. Many thanks. Grateful for your time, gentlemen, this morning. Let's start uh, from the... Uh, camp of uh, the IGP, uh, talking about uh, this uh, relocation of the Agbubuloshi. Now, that's a, a, a one suggestion he's uh, put across that. Uh, to deal with uh, lawlessness, the only way out is to uh, relocate uh, Agbubuloshi, the residents there, uh, to, uh, to uh, I don't know where, but that's what he said. I'm trying to take a quick look at that story. Uh, over the weekend, uh, we saw what happened and then exactly what, how the police is dealing with it. Now, he is suggesting that that residence there be relocated as a way of dealing with the uh, continuous violence. Uh, the IGP uh, has proposed the relocation of Sodom and Gomorrah as a permanent solution to the perennial violent clashes in the area. He said a congested nature of the area... Um, uh, made it a fertile ground for the breeding of miscreants and criminal elements who became a nuisance to public peace. And so to deal with it, he is suggesting that relocate residents there and we'll have a permanent solution. Uh, Ms. Harper, let me begin with you. Relocation, a permanent solution? Thank you, uh, Nana, and good morning to our listener out there, viewer out there. And mm. uh, as we said, uh, happy Easter in advance. Mm. But the fact is, relocation, Yes, it can be one of the solutions. But you know, the, 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 the gamut of the whole thing is breakdown of law, breakdown of people trying to, a, a system of people trying to make themselves known in mm. a situation where it should not be. We should understand the dynamics of Abu Bloshi and what is happening really there. When we understand it carefully, it's not about relocating alone because when we relocate them and they still have those things within and security is still not as it should be, believe me not, they are going to continue wherever they may be placed. Mm. Number one, they are human beings and look at the situation they live in and they're happy with it. 
I mean, if you enter Bogloshi, if you make time to enter Bogloshi, and you enter in there, and you look at the condition people are living in, you ask yourself, are you happy here? And they are, they are all right. It is all right with them. Relocate them. Um, the question is, are we going to build new places for them? How are we going to monitor and supervise to ensure that they keep the place as it should be? Because mm -hmm. they've, they've been living in this slum. In fact, it is a place and where human beings should not have in a, inhabit anyway. But they're living there and they're happy with it. I so see. when you relocate them and they're going to do the same thing over there. Number two, you know, Agbogolo, she thinks it's more about factions. Okay, it's more about factions. Where people have become landlords within the enclave. They, they become landlords. It is uh, the, the stronger takes it. Mm. The much stronger person takes it. So what happens is that um, when Amaleba is able to get in there and he gets some supporters around him, he builds a system in there and, and, and he, he rules. He becomes a lord mm. over some situations where everybody who comes in to live has to pay some token to him. I hear they, they're charging between five cities and ten cities a day, for, per day. So whatever you do, you have to pay those taxes to the man or whoever owns the lord within that enclave. And there you're not, not there to not to pay. You, you pay. So these people have become lords. And then these lords have had their way through party politicking. They've been able to infiltrate the party politic of our situation. Mm. And then because they have this um, 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 closeness to parties, mm. they believe and they feel when my party is in power, I have the power to do A, B, C, D, E. And so when it happens like this, we should look at the, 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 the whole, the holistic aspect of the And not thing. just relocation. relocation, that's what you're saying. Just relocating them, putting them in there and allowing those things to fester. Now we would be laughing at the wrong side of our mouth. I so see. yes, relocation is good. And how long, for how long have you been talking about relocation? I remember since 1992 when these clashes began from 93, 97. Mm. And anytime there's a change of government, you see those things happening. 2008, uh, we see those things festering. For how long? And we've been talking about relocation. I remember Pokua said a land was a, a no, land. Ajin and CSIR said, mm. no, we don't want them. See, Ajin Kotoku, the resident said, we will not like them. Mm. And up till today. So we are talking about relocation, yes. But they won't the, solve the, the holistic the, the problem. thing. I'm and grateful. And just relocating may not be I'm grateful. The, oh, no, but uh, just uh, didn't you have So if relocation, and that's if you agree with him, if relocation isn't the total solution, how, how can we deal with this prosecution of those engaged in the you are deputy attorney general prosecution those who get themselves involved in all these crimes well, thank you very much bright um let me start by first wishing uh, our viewers out there and mm. the people of my constituency a good morning and a happy easter in advance mm. and let me make this point from the onset that what the igp has stated is one of the solutions to the problem it is mm. not finality. Well, but he said it's uh, just one that, that he's putting across. Uh, okay. I think there are he, many he's proposing. others. That's just the proposal he's okay. putting across. You see, if you look at the pro problem there, it is hydra-headed. Mm. Hydra-headed because it's been recurring over the period and it does appear to me that anytime we, we tackle it, what we do is just look at the scratch the surface and the root cause of it is not tackled. So it keeps recurring. And I think that one way of tackling the issue is what he has suggested, that you permanently relocate these groups to different locations. You know, because one of the things that, from the security perspective, one of the things that cause this is proximity. Right. Once the, the feuding factions are very close to each other, the slightest misunderstanding spirals into something else. And it is on the basis of that that he's advocating that you have them at separate locations. It's one of the solutions. And I think that if we have the wherewithal and the resources, it could be implemented so that if we have one located at a distance several kilometers from the other, um, at least meantime, it will serve as a kind of check to the sporadic violence that we, we, we keep um, noticing there. And you, you, you could realize that what triggered this was the issue of um, understanding a gas cylinder or something mm -hmm. that somebody was alleged to, have, alleged to have uh, stolen him and was apprehended and, and, and manhandled. And then the other side also decided to react instead of allowing it to be a pure criminal act dealt with by the security agencies. So the solution he's proffering is based primarily on the fact that 
um, proximity is the cause of the frequent outbreak of conflict in that particular geography. So that's one of the aspects. But I think also that the fundamental cause or the root cause, the foundation of the problem must be looked at so that we tackle it from that basis. Once we're able to nip it in the bud at that particular level, then the recurring event will not happen again. Now I'm saying this because uh, if you look at the fact that somebody has been arrested on suspicion of having stolen a thing and it spirals into what happened, then it means that there may be some root causes and we've been doing window dressing. So let's tackle it from that. Use the opinion leaders, use government, use religious leaders, the peace council, and look at the root cause. When we tackle it from that, and we are able to nip it in the bud, then the recurring conflict will cease. Some it's have suggested that you politicians are, are, are part of the problem. You fuel these misunderstandings and then cause these uh, uh, well, 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 that is far-fetched. Let me, let me draw this analogy. Mm. For example, uh, what happened on that unfortunate day? Mm. How has that got to do with a politician? When you, you are allegedly, uh, they arrested somebody who was suspected of having stolen a cylinder and it, it, it sparked off conflict. How, what has that got to do with a politician? People who know the history of Agbupoloshi have said that that is only uh, 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 the immediate cause and that there are remote causes and that it, is where you politicians come in. You, you know, so that's what I'm saying. If indeed that is the case, all we ought to do is to establish, perhaps put in place a committee to look at it and give recommendations that could be implemented to put issues beyond doubt. Understand what you are talking about. Is mm. it right? Sometimes certain places are breeding grounds of people that parties recruit to foment trouble and all that. I right. agree with you. Mm. But you see, going forward, apart from the suggestion that we look at the root cause or also look at the relocation issue as advocated by the IGP, going forward, what I will suggest is that we also put in place measures to ensure that people do not profit from crime. You know, if you engage in violent acts, you are apprehended by the police, and then we put you through the various processes. And if the law finds you guilty, you are given uh, punishment is exacted, at least it will serve as a source of deterrence. But if people commit these uh, heinous crimes and they are walking on the street, then it emboldens others to take the law into their own hands. So in addition to looking at the root cause and the issue of relocation, mm. we ought to also put in place measures to ensure that those who are behind these heinous crimes for example, two people I understand are dead. I'm not so mm -hmm. sure about right. that. that that's so, so yeah, we'll I mean, we, we sympathize with the bereaved families, but we ought to look at who are those who did this and charge them with the appropriate charges to ensure that the law takes its course. Otherwise, there will be impunity. And where there is impunity, it is dangerous. So I would, I would actually go with the IGP, but to some extent, because we also need to look at the root causes and also ensure that justice is seen to be done and manifested clearly so that we can, we can nip this problem in the back. I'm of grateful. Uh, Mr. Malba, would you agree or disagree uh, to the concerns raised by some watchers that uh, uh, what is happening or what has been happening at Agbuk Bulushi isn't simply a matter of uh, uh, people misunderstanding themselves, but there are political uh, strings being pulled by you politicians, and that is why it keeps recurring. Let me say good morning to your viewers and to join my colleagues to wish your viewers a happy Easter in advance. The statement by the IGP for me is a tacit admission of failure on his part. Why am I saying this? Don't we have conflicts and violence erupting in our communities in Ghana? Will his solution be that we should move those communities to other places? Look, the police is supposed to be an intelligence gathering institution. What you do is to invest on in investment uh, in uh, intelligence gathering. But relocating people and separating them, who tells the IGP that people are not allowed to mingle and that he now wants to come and separate people, you be in the east, you be at the west. There's freedom of association, freedom to locate where you want to locate. That does not mean that when you are close to each other, you should fight. And because we know that people are likely to fight and there are deviance in society, that's why we put together an institution called the police. Because we are aware of these acts. If there were no 
violence, no conflicts, there wouldn't have been the need as a statement of tacit admission of failure on their part. It doesn't even form one of the reasons to N get this result? No. And I've just given you an example. I don't want to mention communities that have erupted into violence. It's his solution to those conflict areas to relocate them to another place. That is not. Conflicts can occur anytime, anywhere, because as human beings, there are disagreements. And that's why we put together the police institution. I thought that what he will be talking about is to bury some police intelligence people in the community. Why? This matter that erupted, I am told and I heard that, in fact, a week to the day of the conflict, there were if, uh, signals that these things were likely to happen. Indeed, the uh, Greater Accra Union Minister pointed to that. Now, if you sit by and allow this to erupt, you don't come and say that the solution is to, as it were, separate people. In every country, or in most countries, there are slums. And Agbogoloshi is a slum area. Now, if we are relocating Agbogoloshi, probably on other grounds, health grounds, because as you rightly indicated, the place is not conducive for human habitation. Mm. But to say that because of the violence, don't we have violence erupting in uh, places like East Legon? Don't we have violence erupting in places like uh, 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 Trazaco? Don't you have violence erupting at our various communities, our hometowns? Would he say that they should relocate my village to another place because there's violence there? No. I think that it's a tacit admission of failure. That suggestion is out of place. Relocation has been on the drawing boards. But the relocation which has been on the drawing boards is not based on the violence erupting there. It's based on health grounds. I do not think that if we relocate them, in fact, people can travel to uh, places to have conflict in there. They can move. They can move to where each other are and, 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 and uh, perpetrate it. So I don't think that. I think that I will call on the IGP, bury people in there, plainclothes policemen to be in there, and that will be the solution to forestall future conflicts. That's my, my solution. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, grateful. Just, just a quick one. Mm. You see, I, my brother has made a very interesting point, and we, we need to, to elaborate that. You see, the issue of relocation, uh, if you listened carefully, mm. is, uh, I'm saying that it's one of the, uh, I mean, opportunities you think available. You it's one of the solutions. Yes, it's, it's one of the opportunities available for us to nip this problem in the back. I agree that where there are conflicts, doesn't necessarily mean that you should relocate people. But mm. this is a peculiar circumstance. And you can, you can understand from all the narrations and submissions by the three of us that we've all come to the conclusion that the place is not conducive for human habitation. So that could be one of the reasons we could use to do the relocation of these people to ensure that, look, it pro I, I, I emphasize this point, pro proximity is one of the things. That if one is located at a distance away from the other, it becomes difficult for one to, to get up and take vehicles and travel to another place to go and cause an attack. And even if, the, and then also the warning signals my brother talked about. If you look at the immediate cause of that conflict, mm. if even you had 100 policemen on the ground in plain clothes, they could not have prevented it. Because how could you have anticipated that somebody has stolen something and he is arrested, and because of that, it spirals into something else? Sometimes the sophistication. If, if, if that police the sophistication. There, they couldn't have dealt with it? I mean, it, I, I mean it, it would have been difficult to anticipate because this. Because if someone is stolen and there are policemen there, I mean, then right, they how can you anticipate this? properly before Absolutely. the police station. But I agree. There are attempts to beat the person, and then it, it ends. I, I agree with you. Mm. I agree with you. But I'm saying that it is not one thing that you could easily anticipate. I mean, it's not one of the things that you could easily anticipate, that somebody will steal something, you'll be arrested, and it will spiral this way. But I, I, I largely share with some of the things he's saying. Right, you see. We, the, but the relocation, for me, is one of, it's the, one of the solutions. The, 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 the points I made, and you can verify from the Greater Accra Regional Minister, you know, he's not my boss, so I have to be careful when <laughs> he's my boss now. <laughs> so no, I don't think he'll go through that. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> the Regional Minister indicated that there were signals picked before, and indeed, before, before if I don't know right. what you've heard the news. Right. So that tells you that intelligence gathering is key because they could have forestalled this if using their intelligence that they received, they sent uh, policemen there 
they could have forestalled it. So it was not as if this came out of the blue. This was a matter which probably came out. They did not put it on the front burner and allowed it to erupt in this way. And I think that the police, once they had the, the signals, failed in their duty to ensure that they were able to nip it in their back. Okay, I'm grateful. L let's move on to the independent newspaper. The NDC yesterday held a press conference and addressed uh, several issues. One of the issues uh, addressed uh, is that of the Delta Force uh, attacks. And the NDC is suggesting that the, uh, the presidency is complicit in the violent attacks which have seen these groups seize offices, toll booth, attack and kill supporters of the NDC. Now, the NDC says the country has been held hostage by lawless activities of vigilante groups affiliated to the governing NPP. The NDC is worried, for instance, that uh, the president goes to Kumasi, assures the Asante Hene of dealing with this, and then the next day, uh, the groups go there and throw out the regional security coordinator and therefore believes that uh, the presidency is complicit in all these attacks. Mr. Kwamiapa, let me begin with you. Is the NDC's justification for saying that the president is complicit in this whole thing? Uh, uh, can we take that? Complicit. That's what, what is something the, I would, the, I would, the chairman I, I, has I, said. I wouldn't buy into. Mm. Um, now, now, before I even continue, there was something I should have done earlier. Mm. Let, me comment, let me comment the newsroom of TV3. Mm. They did a story. I don't get the time to be here always when they do these stories. Mm. But they did a story recently about a girl who, who had was hit by a hit and run driver and all those things. And radio, TV get results. And mm. quickly, the social welfare people moved in. And they did a, a very good job. And I think that the newsroom should be commended for that new story, that lady who took up that mantle. Uh, we say kudos to her. And then she has saved a life. Right. That is very great. Uh, kudos to the newsroom of TV3. Let me come back to the complicit or non-complicit. You see, let's be very careful the way we use words. I mean, and if I go a bit into this, we do agree Delta Force did something which was totally, totally out of the way. Very wrong. And nobody, can e nobody should even equalize. Mm. We agree to that perfectly. And we've condemned it over and over and over and over. Nobody has, nobody has really accepted that it was right. From the president down to even whoever it is. So when you say complicit, uh, it, I find it a bit difficult to, you, I, I, to I get I hope you, you did not hear uh, uh, the regional chairman of the party and the member of parliament for Asin Central uh, saying that the data force can go on and do what they're doing. You see, what, what, what is happening is, I think that they were speaking yeah, into the who? party. Uh, they were speaking, in, and seriously, I have condemned... When I, I, use, I get the opportunity to condemn what Delta force did, mm -hmm. I blame NPP party for what, what went wrong. It is not... You see, we have party and we have government. These two must be... There's a thin line anyway, but there okay. should be a separation. So government didn't say it. The government. But did you also hear the party? Yes, I understand. The party did well to recruit. Say that nobody people. can touch them. And no, that, uh, that one. It was one one man saying all these things. When we hear from all the government officials, the president to the minister of interior to whatever, and everybody condemning it every way, one person just got up and said, "Because." And even Derek, he believes. The, yeah, the yeah, National but Security he, Minister but to he, come and he, arrest him. He, he believes. What he believe, he's believe, saying is wrong. He believes that the work he did with the boys and everything came to, and that's why I think that he should have attacked the NPP party as a party. Okay, you see, when it gets to a point where a party produces a president, and then we allow, the, the president becomes the president of Ghana, mm. and we allow it to look like the president is still the president of the party, this is where we cannot draw that line quickly. When we're able to draw those lines off, then we'll be able to know the role the party should play and the role the government is playing. Because Nana Akufuado is not for NPP again. That's mm. what they should take it to be. And definitely the country is not for NPP. It is for Ghana and it's for Ghanaians. And the man is the president of Ghanaians. What so is the point here? My point is, mm. if NDC is saying that the president is complicit, and that's the word, the president is complicit, mm. I, 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 I don't really agree so much. Yes, the party made a mistake. The NPP party after winning elections, thought that they've got it all. Instead of looking at the people they, 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 they proposed to and worked with and made things with, and to go to them and talk to them and make them see what has really come out of it, they all relaxed and some went into lobbying for mm. positions mm. and left the party there and they left the people who worked harder and harder for everything. And by whatever happened, 
the, these men are looking at and seeing the people they never thought would even have come into government, coming into government, lobbying for positions and getting it. And he, they were promised. For eight years, they've been in opposition, fighting and doing all those dirty works. And then today, you are in power. They don't see whatever is going on. And none, not a party chairman, not a party member, not a party official is coming to them to tell them that, boys, we've gone here. That's what we're planning for and everything and everything. And then this is where the place is. And that is where I thought the party made that huge mistake of not handling that. And after all, and after all what was the case here? Mm. Yesterday, they were fined 2,400 and people were right. not happy with it. But the question is, what was the charge? People were equalizing with the Munti A3. I, I, I don't think I saw anything in the charges that there was a contempt. Well, that's, that's I have two mm. lawyers here. I think yes, that, yes, that, that's the court's discretion. But, uh, yes. You could have asked them to go home and sleep. And that's, it, that's, so, that's it. Yeah, so that's you see, the whole thing is they've been charged for some crimes, mm. which I didn't see anything like they're contempting. Let's wait and see whether the court can, somebody can put a contempt case against whoever, when the eight people who have been arrested may be charged for the contempt. Mm. Not those who run, the 13 who run away from everything. So for them, let's be very very careful about how we separate the issues and how it comes to be. So to say the government, the president is complicit, I think it's too it's deep, it's too far-fetched. Right. Yes, the party did a mistake. Yes, the party couldn't handle the situation on the ground very well. And uh, by some situations, it has extrapolated and it is now the government which is taking the blame. Okay. Whatever the case is, the government has come out to condemn this totally. And I think that we should accept the condemnation. We should still look, look at the court processes and let allow the rule of law to see where it ends. But to come out quickly and say, because uh, possibly, I don't know where they were standing on, whether because the, the president has not gone to tell the... I don't know what they were... The, the NDC on. says uh -huh. that the president goes to Kumasi, mm -hmm. assures he has something here, that Nana? this Delta Force will be dealt with. Yes. The very day he left, the mm -hmm. next day, the regional security coordinator is attacked. No, it, it, happened, on it, that, it happened before. Yeah, no, it happened before Nana went to Kumasi. No, no, okay. So after Nana has left Kumasi, then, then these went boys to go to, to the to court free. to free the suspect. That's it. So they are suggesting that, well, if the president goes to assure the assassin that mm -hmm. I am dealing with this, yeah. and then he leaves there, and the, and boys, then the, go the boys go to, court to free and free them, yeah. then it means that the president knows you what see, is happening. Nana, Nana, you that's can, the argument. Yes, that's the, the argument. argument. You, Nana, you can, you, can, you can handle situations to a point, okay? And um, these boys, <laughs> they said they were assured by party. Mm. That, oh, we'll go to court, and when we go to court, we'll make sure that you don't, the, 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 the judges find a way of, we, whatever, something they were told, they were promised. And so what infuriated them was the fact that they went to court, and then they are put in remand. And that is why the others came in to say, no, if that's the case, and the party has lied to us. That's what I'm saying, that the party, let's, let's begin to hold mm. people responsible for what they do wrong. Yes, the president is the leader of the party. But he's not the president of Ghana. A lot of things to do. Let's look at into the party and who didn't do his work right. If Mr. Japong is going around saying that they should be allowed, and he says he recruited them and then he promised them. Let's begin to look at on what powers, by whose authority did he begin promising them? And when, after they, they've won the elections, how did he operate with those boys to make sure that they were there waiting for? Because nobody can be a minister immediately and nobody can be a chief executive immediately. Okay. Mr. Pa, I'm grateful. Honorable Penka, you, you, uh, hmm. the, the charge of complicity, <laughs> Mr. Pa thinks uh, that uh, we, we mm. can't, uh, the NDC is going just to I, I, I think, I think they, 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 they have another meaning to that word, not the meaning that we all know. That he acted with others to cause what happened in Kumasi. The president acted with others to cause what happened in Kumasi. It's a totally misunderstood word. The context in which it is used is totally misplaced. Mm. Even in the context of political expediency and all that, they got it all wrong. To say that somebody is complicit in another thing, you know what it means. Mm. He acted in concert with that other person in committing an offense. How do you say that the president acted in concert with Delta forces to do what happened in Kumasi? What is the nexus? How? How do you link? What is the link at all? So somebody just got the word from nowhere and started using it. It is inapplicable in the worst of circumstances. How could you accuse the president of being complicit in this act? The president himself has actually been very honest in this matter. He has condemned whatever happened. Mm. He has ordered the state security to do everything in their capacity to bring order. And you are saying he's complicit. What's that? Somebody just felt like using a particular word at a particular time, got angry and decided to spew it. Let's, Please, let's, we should be let's, careful let's the choice of words that we use. The chronology. The, we should president, be careful. the president addresses the nation, tells these uh, persons to stop whatever they're doing. 
the violence continues. Regional Security Coordinator is picked or, or showed out of his office. The president says, hey, stop. The president goes to Kumasi, tells the Asante Hene, I am dealing with this. The next day, the court issue. If you see the line, you can't, you can't join the pieces together? Never, ever. Never, ever. In any case, when they went to commit this particular act, mm. they were arrested. Right. They were apprehended. And they were put before a competent court. You see, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm deciding to be a little charitable with the description of, 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 of how the word has been used. Mm. I am deciding to be a little charitable. But there is no nexus at all. There's no correlation between complicity and then what the pres uh, His Excellency the President said and what the uh, Delta Force members actually did. Then there's, the, there's another meaning and definition of that particular word, complicity. But I can say without a shred of doubt that it's a misplaced description. And you see, look at the action of His Excellency the President mm. before and after the incident. He's condemned it in no uncertain terms and the law is working. Right? The charge that was preferred against the people Yesterday, I had a lot of commentary, and this morning, I had commentary on the fact that, um, and then you can even see it, that 2,400 guys yeah, the is, is says that uh, The, 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 the question that we should raise fundamentally, mm. we are running a country of rule of law, not rule of men. Fundamentally, what should we be asking ourselves is, the offense to which they were charged, what is the punishment for conviction? And the punishment that was meted at, was it within the contemplation of the law? If it is outside the law, it is wrong. Error of law. So we go for a sessionary and we can crush it. And uh, remember, in the not too uh, recent, uh, distant uh, past, you recall that when the man who attempted to uh, shoot the former president mm. in church was charged and put before court, he was convicted and sentenced to a number of years in jail, contrary to statutory provision. The number of years he exacted on the convict was more than what was contemplated by the law. When they went for an order of Shishorara, it was shut down. So the question we should be asking ourselves is, what the trial judge did in this circumstance, was it within the law? And the answer is that it was within the law. Because you have, in every um, uh, statutory provision, or in some statutory provisions, you have the minimum punishment, mm. and you have the maximum punishment. So it now lies on the judge to use her judicial discretion to exact the punishment, whether to go for a minimum, a medium, or a maximum. And what she did was within the ambit of the law. Simplicity. And let's also remember that she, she, in exercising judicial discretion, all that has to be within the contemplation of Article 296 and Article 23 of the Constitution, mm. which gives you judicial uh, exercise of discretion as a person. So if we are writing a critique or doing a critique of whatever the judge did. We should be taking into consideration whether or not what he, he did was within the ambit of the and law. You think and is, I think that it was within the ambit, ambit of the law. Of and even emphasis on this. You see, when the lawyer made in a plea for mitigation, and my brother knows that when you put in a plea for mitigation, you look at other circumstances and factors that will justify the mitigation you are asking for. So the conduct of the convict before and then during the trial, his conduct, you take into consideration whether he's a first-time offender. Mm. And then also you take into consideration the entire circumstances of the matter. And you recall that in this particular matter, the, the lawyer cited the case of Frimpong and the Republic to, to buttress his case, which was decided by his lordship Justice Jules Duche, that when people have a first brush with the law, you should treat them leniently. Right. You know, and it, that particular matter takes its root from previous cases that were decided by a superior court in the case of Haruna in the Republic, which was decided in 1980, and Abu in the Republic, that first-time offenders should be treated leniently. And the judge looked at all those so circumstances. The, so the court might Again, have taken all this into account. Absolutely. You consider all the factors. You see, if we don't take care, we will become so sensational in whatever we do that we will push the courts into a certain direction. And that will also be a danger to our democ the very existence of our democracy. Okay. Please, the action of the Delta Forces has no justification in our democratic dispensation. You will condemn it. And anyway. everybody, MPP, NDC, PNC, every political party in Ghana, we have all condemned it with a unanimous voice. But also trying to attack the integrity of the judge 
for passing a sentence within the law amounts to the same thing we are doing. We are denigrating the judiciary. If we are questioning punishment exacted within the confines of the law, what are we saying? That she should have sentenced them to death? Is that what the, the, the law says? No. And people are making an analogy and, and, and drawing a comparison with uh, what happened to the Muntier three. My brother knows. Wrap and it up is, for me. It's very clear mm. that the two are not comparable at all because you are just comparing apples and oranges. They are not. All right. Please. In one of them, statute provides for punishment. In the other, is subject to pure discretion. Of contempt. the judge, the court. Yes, contempt, for okay. example. And he knows that we haven't codified it specifically that this is the minimum punishment, this is the maximum punishment when you are convicted. For. So it becomes a judicial discretion in matters like this. As per, per the All right, Honorable Bank, I'm grateful for your time. Mr. Malba, your boss said that you, your party chairman uh, perhaps didn't mean uh, complicit and that he wanted to say something else. And also the fact that the 2,400 is, is uh, the, the right punishment for such an offense. You see, I have described the sentence or the fine as a slap on the wrist. That's how I've described it. The charge that the... Um, uh, Munt, uh, Munti, um, <laughs> the, Delta the Delta Force people were, were being uh, uh, convicted for is a misdemeanor. And a misdemeanor, you are allowed to sentence the people to custody. You can sentence them to six months, but it must not exceed two years. So what we are saying is that much as the fine is allowed, and that the judge performed her or his duty within the confines of the law. But that same law allows the judge to impose a much harsher punishment than just a fine, which will be deterrent enough to deter other people from doing it. There's a range. Fine, six months, two years. So question is, why did the judge give them the list of it. 2,400. Why didn't the judge give them at least the middle of the sentence? Their plea. So I'm saying that. And the fact that they are first time offenders. Good. You see, we know the history of these Delta Force people. In fact, they are vigilante groups that have been instituted by the MPP. They have accepted it. They themselves, they've, they've owned up to do, those groups. Ever since Nana Kufado was made president. We've all seen the activities of these vigilante groups. Depending on which region you are, the name will change. If they are in Accra, Greater Accra, committing atrocities, they are called invisible forces. If they are in Kumasi, doing similar things, they are called Delta Force. If they are in the Northern region, behaving that way, they are called Kandahar Boys. If they are in the Western region, they are called Crocodiles. <laughs> so they are the same people but like my chairman said, they changed their names. <laughs> my, my founder said. So I am sure that the court knows the activities of these people. And the court should have taken judicial notice of how these vigilante groups have caused mayhem to Ghanaian society. Now, they have sent their announcements to everywhere. They've sent it to NHIS, they've seized public places, they've seized uh, toll booths, they've seized, in fact, they, they, they meted out injustice to a policeman right in front of the president's office. I thought that when they now send their notices to the court, I said, Oluwa, now this is where the beginning of the end of this nonsense will come. So I thought that the courts will seize the opportunity, knowing that the court is, are there to protect the public interest, will seize the opportunity and send a signal to these groups that never, never, and never again should you people hold the people of this country to ransom. We failed, the court failed to assume that responsibility. So we lost an opportunity. You are an officer of the court. 
You really think the that God failed? That's the danger. I am saying, look, that's the danger. Mal, you are not solving the problem. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. We are allowed to critique rulings. Right, that's what we are not allowed. So we can go ahead. But I'm asking you. We are not allowed. You are not solving the You really think the court failed? That's what I'm saying. No, I wish you, 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 I wish you were counsel for, was counsel for those people. No, no, no. You were My brother, you would have asked for something less than no, no. that. When, when we were talking, I was I'm surprised. surprised. Okay, when you were talking, I was Can you allow him? Uh, Mr. Mbappé, please go on. This attack in the Sunyani court, uh, 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 Kumasi uh, Circuit Court, mm. was not only an attack on the bench, it was an attack at the bar, attack at the judicial service, an attack on innocent Ghanaians who were in the court. For the first time, the judge had to run, take cover under tables. Is that pleasant enough? You, you, look, 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 look. Let's take this matter serious. The UN, the whole UN, I don't know whether you've read it, had caused to call on our government to deal with those hoodlums. And that is not a matter for the judiciary to also take notice of and give these people the kind of sentence that would deter others from engaging in that. So, yes, there's a plea. And I thought that even in the Muntier today, mm. there were no fifth time offenders or there were tenth time offenders. They were not. But the court saw that what they did was so obnoxious that even their plea as first time offenders cannot ameliorate their, 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 their issue. So first time offenders, it's not automatic that because you are a first time offender, you must be dealt leniently. The judge himself said he dealt with them leniently. Didn't you read this? Right. Uh, he I, himself I, I said it. Of he said that mm -hmm. he dealt with them leniently. But I'm saying that the use of first time offenders should not be the reason for dealing with them leniently. Because in Muntietre, they were not 10th time offenders. They were also first time offenders. But the court took a view that this is so sacrilegious and no matter because they wanted to send signals to other people. So I think that nobody is criticizing the judge. We have not said that the judge has taken money from anybody. We have not attacked him. We have not said that his face looks like this. What we are saying is that the ruling, the judgment, the was, it's not deterrent enough to deter other people. You had people making mockery that now if you have 3,000, all you need to do is to go and attack a court, and then they will charge you two, four, and then you have balance in your pocket. Because it tells you and me that it is not sending the right signal, that ruling is not sending the right signal to other people. And I thought that the court should have assumed that responsibility and bring sanity and ensure that this lawlessness which is going on. When they send the matter to the court and attack the court, I said, this one, final, it has come. But I'm disappointed. Nana, mm -hmm. let me, uh, Briefly. Let me jump in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, is the NDC against the court or they're against the president? I'm getting confused. No, then they are talking about the ruling. They think that the two thousand so four hundred is too linear. That's it. And That's he it. just said so that. No, my, question that said, my question could have been six months. Uh, my question yes. comes into do that. Okay. Is it now the court who didn't do right, or then now the president is complicit? Well, Those are two well, different two. issues here. First of all, we never know the right. No, no, we didn't do right. They are not saying the court didn't do right. They are saying that you've not tightened the screws. Good. Good. The question is, the question is, we are talking about Muntier. What shows that? No, we are not talking about. In the law, no, no. He just mentioned. I'm just using it as in the law, in the sense of contempt. Who decides how much a person, as they all said, there is nothing that shows that when somebody says, Yeah, he said it's not that. I'm just coming with it. I'm landing. In terms of the contempt, it is in the in the bosom of the judge to decide how much somebody may be charged for. Mm. Who knew the 10,000 was the least the judge is charged or the highest the judge is charged? Mm. So you see, when it comes to this situation, and he, as an officer of the court, knows about mitigation, and all these things were taken into consideration. Then, um, what about the president's resolve to crush all this vigilantism? I mean, he's also had it. Mm. So let's let's hold the president to what he says. That's so let's let's hold it. That's what yes. I've always said. It's I, just it's just I, I didn't even deal with the president. Those things, and let's see how he will be able to do it. Let so that when we sit here next time, in a year's time, and there's still vigilantism, vigilantism going on, things are going on like this, mm. then we can hold the person into account and say that maybe then you might have complicity in whatever you're doing. But for early days now to say somebody's complicit and all those things, then the NDC is against the ruling and what the cost is. But nobody decides right. what is minimum and what is maximum. No, the NDC you know says that. against the, 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 right. the amount. What uh, we are simply saying is that the judge not, not the was rule. right 
in within the law, but we said that there was opportunity to tighten the screws. Mm. That's why you should understand. So between six months and two years and the fine, uh, we are saying, saying that, that the fine is, could have, is, 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 is the least. Give them custodial sentence. They should That's have given them custodial them. sentence. And when I brought in the Moutier, it was in reference to mitigating factors using first-time offender principle uh, to mitigate. And I'm saying that if that were possible, the Muntier Trade 2 would have enjoyed this first-time offender status. Okay. But the court viewed it as sacrilegious. And that's the kind of thing I want the court to look at this one too. For the president... But yes, quickly. We, look, the president first made a statement on these vigilante groups in parliament, when he was addressing parliament. Mm. Whilst he was at it, in Tabale, the Kandahar boys were taking over a national health insurance office. The next time we heard of the president on this matter was in Ashantini's palace. Whilst he was at it, uh, some boys in Kofrodia, Eastern Region, mm. were also taking our health insurance office. This current issue, which is the court, no less a person than the Minister for National Security, was addressing Parliament and denying that they do not exist, they do not have license, in fact, was massaging the whole so thing. So they are not registered. They are not registered. Whilst he was there, telling the people of this country how he cannot disband them, they were creating mayhem in, in Sunyan uh, Kumasi. I don't know why Sunyan today is in my mouth. <laughs> it's in Kumasi. So if you add all these things up, and you, you, you rightly indicated that the people, the Delta Force people said that they were promised jobs. And because they've not had it, that's what they are doing, what they are doing. Add all. Don't take one, choose one, and do it. Add all. You will see some form of state complicity in it. I see. Indeed. Okay. Indeed. Okay. The what, president, what, what, the president yes, on two well, occasions, that point. Okay. the president on two occasions, mm. uh, 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 and joined the IGP, the former IGP, and the current IGP to deal with the Delta Force. That's what they have been using. I ask the question, Bright, now that you are here hosting this program, suppose your, your, your manager tells you that the way you are dealing with your guests is not good. He gives you first warning, second warning. I'm sure the third one, he'll fire you. <laughs> Why is President Nana Kufado, if he strongly believes that his orders are not being taken by the IGP, why is he not firing him? Let me put that question to Anabuk Penka. Why is he not firing him? Why, why is, 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 is the president unable to fire people because his orders are not being taken? That is total falsehood. Mm -hmm. You see, we should, we should put everything in perspective. And if we don't take care, okay, when a woman fails to perform her marital duties, we will attribute it to the president. <laughs> I mean, if we don't take it, that's the next thing we are going to be doing. I see. You see, how, how can you say, what stretch of imagination can we say this? I know, I know, I we are told that the right. back stops at the president. Right, the, the, right, so right, right. <laughs> In a moment. You see, it looks like, my wife is suddenly, not suddenly, it looks like uh, we have forgotten where we are coming from. All right. And that is why, I pe personally, I don't like equalization. Right. To say that A did this, B did that, and so it's been done now, mm. and there's, just, there's no justification. And you have heard me, mm. and you've heard well-meaning people of my party in government condemning what happened in no uncertain terms. What I'm saying is that my brother has tried very hard to justify his chairman's use of that unjustified word, mm. complicity. He has tried very hard, and he has been highly unsuccessful in doing so. You see, I, I just draw his attention to a few things. When Inwa, a regional minister, in opening tender, was changed away and uh, the things were taken and destroyed and he was removed. Hmm. When Iyendi, a DCE, was changed away. When there were widespread things like school feeding program, people were quenching fire in 2009 and taking over toll boots. Was His Excellency President Mills com complicit? If he accepts that he was complicit, he can draw that analogy today. Okay. Please, we should look at things in a holistic manner. I have run Individuals out of who are radical will always do things, but the law ought to be applied Allowed to the matter to, to serve as a deterrent. I am grateful. I have run out of time. Honorable Joseph Dindok Benka is a member of parliament for uh, the Timpani constituency, a deputy. Uh, ten years. You were sworn in yesterday. Yes. Congratulations once again. Thank you. A member of the NPP. Have great work. work. Yes, he has to work. work. <laughs>
<laughs> grateful for your Thursday morning. Wish you a happy Easter. Very good brother and friend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now that, now that uh, he, you are his boss, he, I'm sure. <laughs> Mr. Malibar is a member of the But NBC. let me tell my boss that uh, for the oh. eight others, who <laughs> attacked the court, stormed uh, the court. We are it is, it asking, is his responsibility we are as a deputy attorney general to advise his attorney general <laughs> to bring criminal contempt against them. We are watching oh, them. Oh, okay, all right. When they bring the file <laughs> before <laughs> me, <laughs> we are, we are, when they bring the file before me, <laughs> and that's Bobby Apao is a lecturer at the Pentecost <laughs> University here in Accra. We're grateful uh, for your time, gentlemen, this morning. Thanks so much.